It was nicknamed the Brick, Motorola's prototype cellular phone used to make what is regarded as the first public mobile phone call on April 3, 1973. Those who think getting a car phone is not for them, whatever the reason, haven't kept up with the booming industry of cellular radio telephones. But a business was not yet sparked. For the next 10 years or so, these first-generation portable phones were used for development. And once Motorola launched the phones in the early 1980s, they had not lost their size or weight of a brick or their antenna. So you would have stuck out while walking the streets of, say, New York or London if one of these was stuck to your ear. In fact, these phones were such a novelty that Motorola on the back behind the battery put instructions on how to make a phone call. It states, enter the phone number, press send, and put the unit to your ear. In the mid-1980s, Finland's Nokia entered the market and then launched GSM phones. GSM handsets could be used across multiple markets and could send data along with voice. Then the antenna shrunk along with the battery and ringtones, texting, all became part of our shared experience. By the millennium, we had faster 3G phones and mobiles entered emerging markets bypassing fixed lines altogether. Handsets were not only made in Asia, but sold by companies from Taiwan, China, and of course, South Korea. Get that picture within picture up. Steve Jobs and Apple enters the market, and everyone had to have a smartphone, video, social gaming, cameras, apps, and more apps. And now, 4G rolling out. Wireless networks to give us content on steroids. So, where will these devices take us in the next 40 years? By some estimates, there are now 7 billion wireless devices. It could be that by 2053, everything everywhere will be connected wirelessly. Jim Bolden, CNN, London.